Hello beautiful, this is Dr. Vanessa R. Brooks and today we're gonna to discuss yoga and why you need to stop telling your congregation that it is demonic. So leaders who really do care about the people they serve are able to move beyond their biases and they're able to move into a space of research and critical thinking. When you care about helping people and hopefully all of you who are in ministry care about helping people, it should move you into the position of being a healer. And in order for us to heal the people that God has called us to serve, we have to be willing to, again, move ourselves out of our biases. And that includes our religious biases. A lot of the information that we hear when it comes down to yoga is misinformation and disinformation by people who are so prone to being biased towards their own personal convictions and beliefs that they're not willing to critically think about the topic at hand. And what you may not understand is that a lot of people who are Christians, who are believers, who practice yoga, are not practicing it to access some demonic entity or to worship a strange God. What you may not know is that many believers are practicing yoga because science has proven to us that there are some incredible medical benefits to yoga. And we're going to talk about those today. I really do believe that we're in the middle of a paradigm shift when it comes down to the church. The church plays such a critical role in helping individuals to heal. And one of the things that I really want us to move into as leaders is rather than project our religious beliefs and convictions onto the body of believers, is to learn how to actually engage believers in conversations, asking them specific questions. I wonder how many of the people who preach that yoga is demonic has asked individuals why they actually practice it, as opposed to you watching videos about yoga and seeing things that you're not used to seeing in your own religious and spiritual practices and allowing fear to overcome you unconsciously and then projecting that fear and ignorance onto the people that you are here to serve and to help. You'd be surprised at what information you can find out, not just by doing some quick research, but also by learning how to engage people in conversations and asking them why they do the things that they do. I'm here in Indiana today and I'm preparing for a mental health conference tomorrow or mental health workshop tomorrow where I'll be teaching my program how to build trauma-informed churches. And we're going to talk about a lot of this stuff tomorrow and I, I guess I just felt kind of inclined to bring some of that to this, to this, to this space and whoever hears this message, I just pray that you are open and willing to listen to my heart and listen more importantly to the things I'm saying and rather than react just take some time to just take a deep breath and process what it is I'm saying. So let's get into let's get into yoga, okay? And I wanna share just some statistics about what science through research, through evidence-based practices have been able to share with us about the benefits of yoga. Now, the first thing we need to understand is that yoga has been scientifically proven to improve our HRV or our heart rate variability. Now, our HRV, or our heart rate variability, measures the balance between our sympathetic nervous system and our parasympathetic nervous system. Now, when our parasympathetic and our sympathetic nervous system are working together and everything is balanced, it produces a strong, healthy heart rate. And we measure heart rate to determine overall well-being. Why would you not want people in your congregation to experience overall well-being? You do want them to have a healthy heart rate, right? but there's more, there's more benefits to yoga. Additionally, when our HRV, our heart rate variability is balanced and healthy, it also gives us a very good control of our response. It determines how well we're able to respond to frustrations or problems or injury, stress. I know you want the people you serve to be as stress-free as possible, right? Well, yoga has been proven again to uh, improve HRV, which means that individuals will experience a, a, a better control of how they respond to um, external situations, which means that they'll experience less stress. Hopefully, you know that stress is the number one cause of sickness and disease in our bodies. Among other things, yoga is about breathing, consciously breathing, aware of breathing and aware of yourself, your internal self. And so much research has been done on the power 
uh, and, the, and the medicinal power of breathing. So we're gonna get into the breath work involved in yoga. Now the research has shown us that breathing through yoga practices improves anger, depression, and anxiety. And as a healer, I know that's what you want for the people you serve. Remember, this is not just a benefit for your congregation, but it's gonna also be a benefit for you. As a, a clerical leader, it's gonna lift a lot of stress off of you. It's gonna lift a lot of your own anxiety because your, your congregations are learning how to be healers of self. We have that power within us. In fact, even Jesus talked about the power to heal self in the scripture. And so yoga is just one way to activate that healing power. So again, when individuals practice yogic breathing, it has been proven scientifically to reduce stress, to reduce frustration, to reduce anger, to reduce depression, and to reduce anxiety. Additionally, yoga has been scientifically proven to reduce the stress hormone that we secrete. This is major because when the brain releases heavy amounts of the stress hormone, again, it begins to create sickness and disease in our bodies. And so additionally, yoga breathing and yoga exercises in general have also been scientifically proven to reduce high blood pressure. Did you hear that? And you do know that in the African American community, their rates of high blood pressure within our community is alarmingly high, okay? And I don't know about you, but I'd rather see people reducing their high blood pressure through a natural practice of breathing and yoga exercises than putting harmful chemicals in their body through prescription medications. And did you know that yoga has also been medically proven to reduce lower back pains? Where you at if you have back pain issues? <laughs> so additionally, yoga has also been scientifically proven to reduce, if not heal, asthma. But what was really fascinating is the groundbreaking research done where scientists and researchers were studying yoga and meditation to see the effects of it on traumatized patients. Now you may not be aware of this, I hope that you are, but one of the five people in our churches have experienced some form of trauma and or PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And almost everyone in our churches have experienced some form of vicarious trauma or secondhand trauma where they themselves didn't experience the trauma firsthand, but they witnessed it. They witnessed it from somebody that was close to them or they witnessed it just in general. Now, what we do know about people who experience trauma and or PTSD is that they have a very difficult time relaxing. They're very tense. They have a difficult time not to, uh, being in a state of hyper arousal. They tend to shut down. Their brain hijacks them so that their uh, prefrontal cortex, their frontal lobes, the, which is the part of the brain that's responsible for higher level executive functioning, uh, doesn't work well, but the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the emotional brain works very well. And so it makes an individual almost incapable of thinking or having critical thought. And so these people tend to experience a lot of time in numbness with their emotions and feelings repressed. They end up with chronic and or acute anxiety and depression. So it, this, this research is really groundbreaking because we now have ways to improve the effects of trauma where we didn't have this say, you know, even 30 or 40 years ago. So Dr. Van der Belsekult uh, did some research and he was looking at breathing and mindfulness and or meditation as well as movement in his study as it pertains to individuals who had PTSD and the impacts, the benefits of practicing yoga. Now, a major challenge in recovering from the effects of trauma is getting an individual to be in a state of relaxation. But yoga, without fail, improves a person's ability to be relaxed and calm which is what we want to happen so that they feel safe in their bodies again. Now, cultivating sensory awareness is a major part of trauma recovery. This is where yoga becomes so powerful. It's really simple. If you don't know what your body needs, then you don't know how to take care of it. For example, if you were not able to become aware that you were hungry, you'd never eat. If you were not aware that you were having a pain in your head, 
you wouldn't know to take medication for the headache. That's called sensory awareness. But people who've experienced trauma, their sensory awareness has been damaged. So yoga is an excellent way to restore that sensory awareness to help the individual become present of what their body needs, to help them become mindful, to bring them into the present moment instead of always focusing on the trauma of the past. So rarely in traditional therapy, and certainly not in religious experiences, are individuals allowed to become aware of what's going on with them internally. Yoga is an opportunity for an individual to get calm and to be present so that they can begin to identify the inner shifts that are taking place within them. And this is important because emotional states are imprinted in the body's chemical profile. And so traumatized people need to learn that they can tolerate these various internal shifts so they don't feel numb. They don't feel the need to repress or shut down or be hyper vigilant or hyper aroused. Traumatized people need to befriend their inner experiences and cultivate new action patterns. And that's where yoga becomes so beneficial because in yoga, you focus on your breathing and your sensations moment to moment. In yoga, you begin to notice the connection between your emotions and your body. It's in this moment that traumatized people have the opportunity to experiment with changing how they feel. It is the activation of healing thyself, just like Jesus taught. For example, by taking those deep breaths, you get to ask yourself a question. Does breathing relieve that tension in my shoulder? Or does breathing relieve that tension in my, or that pain in my back? And once traumatized people, really all people, can begin to approach their body with curiosity rather than fear, the real change takes place. The real shift happens. Another problem with trauma is that it makes a traumatized person feel like they are stuck, literally trapped in the horror of what happened to them. And yoga can help with this because yoga helps you become aware of your body and becoming aware of your body can pull you out of that feeling of being trapped in the horror of the past and help you connect with your present moment to moment experience. You know why I want you to stop demonizing yoga? Because when traumatized people are able to notice and befriend the sensations in their body, it creates profound changes in their brain and in their mind, which leads to healing the trauma. And as ministerial leaders, if you should want anything for the people of God, it is to see them healed and set free, delivered from the trauma of their past, from reliving it over and over again because their brain thinks that they're stuck in the, in the horror of what happened to them. Trauma moves them out of that past experience. It moves their brain, it shifts their brain from believing that whatever happened to them, traumatic, whatever traumatic experience happened is still happening. Yoga moves them out of that and helps them to connect with the present moment, what's happening right now. And then they can start to feel safe when they become aware of, them, of their bodies, aware of their environment, aware they're no longer in danger. Don't you want that for your people? Don't you want people to feel that level of freedom and healing? The amazing thing is yoga is not a religious exercise at all. Anyone from any faith can practice yoga. Just like prayer is universal for all religions, so is yoga. So is yoga. It is a spiritual practice that allows a person to connect with God and themselves. I want you to practice some empathy. Empathy is the ability to move out of your own convictions and your own personal beliefs and put yourself in the place of somebody else. In this case, I want you to put yourself in the place of the people in your church congregations. If these people are in fact dealing with trauma, they probably have not shared that with you or anyone in the congregation. With, with trauma comes a lot of, again, repression of emotions, numbing down, shutting down, but it also comes with a lot of shame. And so I want you to imagine that in your congregation, no matter how a person's external features are, they might be smiling, they might be clapping, they might be shouting to the music, but there is something going on on the inside of that individual that you may not be able to see or discern or even know how to identify. Additionally, there may be people in your congregation who are not even trying to fake it. They might have a frown on their face. They might look very distant and cold. Again, these are symptoms of trauma. Now, I want you to understand, remember, when a person has been traumatized, 
they are reliving the trauma, the memory, the horrific memory of that traumatic experience over and over again. This is why sometimes the messages that we preach can cause trauma to individuals, which is why I'm pushing for trauma-informed churches. And so they're in the congregation and they're listening to you talk about the fact that yoga and other things that, are, that, that they know can help them are demonic. Perhaps you're demonizing therapy and evidence-based therapeutic practices, which by the way, yoga would fall into that category. It's now an evidence-based practice for mental health and well-being as well as physical well-being. But you, the person that, that they look up to as their spiritual leader are in the pulpit, demonizing not just the practice, but you are demonizing the practicer of the, of the practice. And so now there is a message coming across the pulpit and even though that might not be your intent, your message is re-traumatizing the already traumatized person in your congregation. And you know what's gonna happen? They likely will terminate their yoga practices and any other practices that are holistic in nature and evidence-based and proven by science to be helpful because of how you are making them feel. And again, they're feeling like their, their past trauma is happening over again while you're demonizing them. If only one person hears this message, let me say this, it's empathy over your personal beliefs. It's empathy over your personal convictions. You have a responsibility, just like I do as a leader, to consider who your message is reaching. And I want you to always assume that in your congregation, there is at least one out of five, if not more individuals, who have experienced some level of trauma. I want you to keep that in mind, all right? Rather than demonizing them, talk to them. Engage them in conversation. I'll be so proud of you. But more importantly, the people who trust you with their spiritual well-being, and oftentimes the people who trust you with their mental, their mental and emotional well-being will thank you as well. So I'm excited for you, and I know you can do this. I know this might be a lot for some of you, but I want to thank you for at least listening to what I had to say. And I would love to know your thoughts, so leave me a comment, okay? And uh, let me know what other topics you want me to teach on, okay? Thank you for watching it. All right, grace and peace. Now I'm done. Drop me a comment, let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next video. This is Dr. Vanessa R. Brooks in the Wellness Care 360 Lab.